and we're back for another episode of the Lakers Fast Break podcast. It's Gerald Glassford coming right back at you here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop Culture Cosmos, Inside Sports Fantasy Football, and Game Source. We truly appreciate everyone out there listening to all of our shows. And if you can, please give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts, John Cena style here. And please, if you can, give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts. Plus, if you can like, share, subscribe, follow, or do anything that you can to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break, Lakerholics.com, and the Hoop Heads Podcast Network, it is sincerely appreciated. Well, the Lakers finished their road trip on a high note. It wasn't the prettiest game in the world, but they do escape Charlotte with a victory, a narrow one at that, but they did go ahead and pull off the win in Charlotte, 101-93, to Defense prevailed again for the team after last night's poor performance. It was just something that was kind of disappointing in New York, but their defense more than made up for it today with a nice performance, especially in the second half. Want to give a big special shout out to Felix, who's watching us right now. What's up with you, my friend? I hope all is well. And just appreciate you watching and listening as we do everyone out there. But again, the Lakers do pull out the game 101 to 93. And here today to talk about the game are two great guests indeed, because I think that's all I see right now. Yes, only two right now, but we've got everybody coming up in the chat room. Felix, Felix is already there. A good team always finds a way to win. Yes, they do, Felix, and we truly appreciate your comments as always. and glad to have you here. But here today to talk about the game are two great guests indeed. First up is the man himself behind Lakerholics.com. Be part of the conversation today at Lakerholics.com. It is Laker Tom, and Laker Tom, again, a stellar defensive effort, especially in the second half, not exactly the prettiest game in the world. And wouldn't you know it, the hero of the game is Alex Caruso. Well, it's good to see Alex hit those last shots. Um, it was good to see Kuzma, who started off with a, an air ball and a, and a side of the backboard ball, uh, did a great job finishing the game off. Um, nice slam key- dunk. Yeah, the key, nice was, the key was the key was that defense in the third quarter. There was a stretch there at the end of the third quarter where we would just really played some of the best defense I've seen on this road trip. Um, managed to take a 10-point lead, managed to give that 10-point lead away, um, managed almost to choke the game at the end. Uh, fortunately, Caruso uh, made that important three, and then we made six free throws in a row, including Kuzma's rainbow free throws that uh, – that this time all went through the hoop instead of being air balls. So uh, the Lakers have alternated wins and losses in the last eight games. So uh, that would predict that the next game is a loss, uh, which we don't want to see. It's a start of a homestand. Um, but uh, we managed to finish the road trip four and three. Uh, you can't complain about that. Um, we Our defense really started to get a little leaky in the second half in the last few minutes of the fourth quarter. But that 16 points that we held them in the third quarter uh, really broke the game open, and it was good to see the team come back and respond. Um, It was good to see Alex have a good game. Um, I was really very disappointed by his defense in the first half. Um, I thought many times he just was not on his man very close. Well, hold Uh, on. Let me see. Maybe he was trying to guard one of the twins and forgot which of the Martin twins he was guarding. (laughs) It could have been. It could have been. Um, you know, we got outscored in the paint 50 to 32. Yeah, um, that was bad, which is amazing. And it, and I don't know if maybe it was just me, but it seemed like the entire game, every loose ball, there'd be three Lakers around it, and and some Hornet would come up with a loose ball. Yeah. We just did not get the loose balls. We were not, you know, we we're not really fighting for those balls the way that we should have been at that point in time. And we looked very disjointed at times. Um, this was definitely a G League type game. I mean, I don't even know if they had any starters left on their side um, and our side, you know, we hardly had any starters left. So this was basically like, like the benches against the benches type of game, but uh, Hey, chalk it up as a win for the Lakers. We finished the road trip four and three. We're still hanging on to fifth place. Um, and uh, now we've got a, we got a good four games coming up. That'll really be a, a test for this crew and we'll see how we do. 
Well, you know, with the offense, it, it's just so hard for us to muster up any points. Yeah. And 101, I think, is uh, – I think the Brooklyn game is an outlier because they simply cannot oh, play no doubt about defense. that. Yeah, they, they cannot play any defense at times in Brooklyn. I think that's going to be a key for them going forward. But with the Lakers, 101, 105, I think, is the maximum output you're going to get on a regular basis that people need to be wary of without LeBron and AD in the lineup. And when that happens, like today – you got to go ahead and play defense. And that's something that outside of what we saw last night in New York is something that's been very consistent with the Lakers. Their, their defense throughout this entire road trip, save that one game, has been their defense. And I'll tell you what, I'm very impressed with the defensive side of things. I know we can criticize Vogel all we want about the offense, unimaginative, da, 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 da. You heard Jamie last night on the Knicks post-game show talk about that endlessly. I get that. I understand that. But I think Vogel understands that he has guys that just – they have a hard time creating points and open looks for themselves on a consistent basis, creating that offense. They're all they're all contributing players, and when you get a whole bunch of contributing players playing, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a hard time getting those points, but the one thing they can do is defend, and when they do it well like they did today, they get themselves and they keep themselves in the ball game. Even when they're down nine, like they were a couple times in the third quarter, like even when they were down, uh, you know, five, seven points, they managed to go ahead, stay with on defensive end. They realized they needed to go ahead and make life tough. And this is something I talked about yesterday. Devontae Graham, just make him a volume shooter with a very low percentage. And they did that for him, three for 13 from three. He was chucking it up. But again, the thing is the Lakers were defending it very well. And that's what happens. And I'll tell you what, it was a great defensive performance again for the Lakers. But here today to talk about the game is a good man indeed. You got to go ahead and catch him whenever he's on Lakerholics.com. He has a little thing to say a little bit later on about the play-in tournament and how the Mavs are taking it. I do also want to give a big thumbs up to Jerwin. Appreciate him giving us a thumbs up on Facebook. I know Magic Man is here, but yes, uh, we'll talk about that later. There is some spoiled milk going on right there. But it is Sean Grice, a.k.a. Magic Man. And Magic Man, again, offense for us is at a premium when it comes to it. We have to fight for every point that we can get. But there's no doubting about how good our defense is. Oh, absolutely, Gerald. Our, our defense keeps us in basketball games. Even in 2021 with um, the avant-garde of the three-point shot or the penetration kick out, somehow um, Frank – just finds a way defensively and and going off what you said about what Jamie was talking about with the um, let's say the banality of Vogel's offense minus AD and uh, LeBron um, you know Vince Lombardi had a great quote once um, some reporter asked him a question and he basically said I don't believe in plays I believe in players and it's the Jimmies and the Joes who make the plays, not the X's and the O's. So the Lakers do have Jimmies and Joes defensively. We really do. Like, they're willing to go into the back alley with you and just brawl until <laughs> the, the, the lights go out. Uh, offensively, you're right, Gerald. We don't have a lot of Jimmies and Joes who can get their own shot outside of LeBron AD, if we had one or two, um, you're right. We might be able to muster more than 105 points max, but we really don't. But um, looking at the big picture, going four and three is actually a really positive that this team should take away because here's the, here, here's the situation. Every team has pretty much now reached the the third uh, turn. So rounding the, the quarter turn here. Once you reach about 20 to 25 games left in a basketball season or a hockey season or a baseball season, normally what happens is it's bad to lose two in a row and it's even worse to lose three in a row. If you lose one and you win one, you haven't really lost any ground. You haven't gained any ground, but you haven't lost any ground against the teams you're fighting with. However, if you lose two in a row, it takes you another two games to get back up there. That's a week. 
And then you might have to take another week where you'll have to go three in one or four and out. And it takes a toll. So if you can win one, lose one here with 20, 25 games left, you actually set yourself up advantageously to be in a top six position because everybody else has to play each other. Everybody else has to play each other. And we know the Blazers do not play well against teams about uh, pretty much who are equal or better than they are. And they're playing a lot of competitive basketball teams coming down the stretch here. Uh, Denver, unfortunately, uh, man, I th- I really thought they had a shot this year. Well, we'll, go through, we'll talk about that on the back end. We'll talk about that also right, on the back right, end right, because right. that Sorry, affects but, the but, standings. I know, right, I know, but just, I know. Just, just sorry, just going into the big picture, just, just win, lose, one here or there, I'm okay with it, especially with LeBron and AD gone, because we don't gain any ground, but we don't lose any ground either. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, again, we will talk about that major injury that's going to shape up the Western Conference pretty handily. It is something that for a team that was looking really good as a major contender for the Western Conference crown. Things have totally changed. So we'll talk about that on the back end along with Magic Mans. Also wanted to go ahead and talk about the comments made by both uh, Luka Doncic and also as well Mark Cuban in regards to the play-in tournament. But getting back to today's game and the end of the road trip, Laker Tom, it's something that, again, they have to maximize every possession. You can just tell. They're not able to go ahead and have free-flowing offense. They're having to go ahead and, and force a lot of shots. It's just something because you don't have the playmakers. You don't have the consistent three-point shooting. You don't have a lot of these things that when you see them, maximize them. It's just – sometimes I think it's like an orange. And the Lakers right now are trying to squeeze every single drop out of that orange in order to maximize their offense at this point in time. It's very hard to go ahead and see them – mustering up like a 120 130 like we're seeing with some of the other teams out there but again that defense really comes through and i'm hoping that drummond and mclemore i mean this is what you're going to get from mclemore everyone okay mclemore wasn't there again today but maybe in a game or two he's going to shot he's going to pop off for another 15 so this is what you're going to get with mclemore but i'm hoping that'll be sooner rather than later that we can get him going as well well, I think the big concern that I have right now is really Drummond. Um, he's not given us the rim protection we want. We were clearly out manned on the boards. Um, and four points uh, followed by, I, I can't remember what he had in the last game. It was two, three, two or three points, something like yeah. that. So, you know, that's, to be honest, uh, you know, I mean, we had to shoot our way in into this victory. We shot 44 threes, which uh, I'm happy to see us take 44 threes. We made 16 of them for 36%. And that's what saved the game. And, and, and the key shots we got all the time were threes throwing the ball into Andre in the post is not a very efficient way of scoring. Um, And he's, you know, he's got quick hands on defense, but he doesn't catch the ball. I mean, I've, I've read that he supposedly has great hands in catching the ball, but, Everything I see is that the ball is is not very secure when you get it to him in the post. If three steals, though. It, three steals. Yeah, he, on, on offense, on defense, on defense, I can see the quickness of the hands, but he's his handle. Same way with Trez in a lot of ways that that the ball sort of just moves around when 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 they get when they get crowded in there. And this is a little bit that we saw the same type of defense that we saw last night. Um, so you know that the other teams are going to see this two games in a row. People were able to shut down Drummond in the, in the interior just by doubling him as soon as that ball went in there because he doesn't handle the ball well in heavy traffic. He doesn't get clean shots. Um, and that's, you know, the one good thing I think was at least on this particular day, we made the adjustment that we didn't make against the Knicks. We should have been shooting 45 threes yesterday. And that's what I said last night on the on the podcast that we had. So tonight we actually turned that around and we took the 45 threes and we made 16 of them. And uh, uh, and that's, you know, sometimes you have to take what the defense gives you. And I, I thought this was a, a good situation of the Lakers doing exactly that. Well, I'll tell you what, it's something that 
hopefully will happen consistently over the next few games is that the Lakers can, with their defense, still pull out these wins. I'm hoping that they will somehow slow down the Boston Celtics on Thursday. I mean, they've been playing much better as of late. I mean, they were down, what, two, three games under 500. But since then, Jason Tatum and the rest of the Celtics have been playing very well as of late as they're continuing their West Coast trip. So hopefully they will come to a stop on Thursday as the Lakers will, will continue, hopefully, their great defensive performance against Boston on Thursday. So we're looking forward to that. And, of course, we will be with you then after the game right here at the Lakers fast break, but it is the Lakers fast break. Once again, the score is one to 93. I do want to give a shout out to Kuzma and magic man. Before we head into the playoff scenario scenario that you talked about, that you were just, it was on your mind today. I could tell because that's what you wanted to talk about. I know that Kuzma in his performance, uh, it's just consistency with him, man. I mean, because last night he laid an egg, but th- today, I don't know, he was more like a, a, a rooster, man, because he was crowing, and he was crowing very good. Yeah, he was, man. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure what to, to think of him anymore, Gerald. I mean, he's to me, he's I, – I have a nickname for him. I call him the contemplative chameleon. I mean, sometimes he'll, he'll go out and he'll have a – Fifteen, four, three, uh, six game, and you think he's, you know, he's the second coming of Grant Hill, and then he'll have a game where he shoots over eight from three, maybe has six points, a couple boards. Um, I thought it was interesting. He 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 had he was wearing pearls uh, on Saturday night on the bench. I thought that was an interesting look. <laughs> um, maybe I think he's paying way more attention to his girlfriend Winnie Harlow and fashion than he is to the game. I mean, that's what I think. Like I said, he's the contemplative chameleon to me, and I don't know what I'm going to get game to game. No, you don't know what you're going to get game for game from him. That's the problem, I think, and that's what's going to hold him back is his consistently and commitment to the game. I mean, you see the talents there. I mean, tonight, 24 points, four from 12 for the three-point area. Not too impressive there. But, again, there were times when he totally was dictating the game out there on the floor. Dennis Schroeder had yep. another okay game, uh, 19 points, six assists, uh, only one turnover, which has got to make Laker Tom very happy. I mean, this is the kind of performance that you do need him. Very solid. Yeah, but that turnover was, that turnover was at a critical moment. Um you know, okay, maybe it isn't going to make him happy. I'm yeah, sorry. No, you know, listen. The, the problem, the problem I still see with Dennis is, I must have counted at least a half a dozen times when the passes that he threw, out of his drives into the paint, were at the feet of people. You know, I mean, and it's it's just like these guys are going you know to be so is, happy when LeBron James returns to the lineup and they get passes into the pocket that they're going to catch it to shoot it. Because with Dennis, it is always at the feet. I mean, I don't understand. Maybe it's because he's only six foot one or six three. Um, but over and over, I see passes coming that are difficult for people to catch and 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 immediately shoot with. Um, but at least we only had eleven turnovers. I think that we, you know, I'd, I'd love to see stats, uh, and it's something that I'll look up of what the fifty fifty balls were because it looked to me like it was twenty five seventy five as far as fifty fifty balls go. For the Lakers recovering them, um, and uh, it's you know, it's just one of those games, and this is one of those seasons that has turned out to be as big an anomaly as the bubble was, because of the players going out. I mean, we're going to talk about the injury, uh, the fact that five guys have had ACL injuries, which is the most since 2012, um, and and I've even come to the conclusion that. LeBron James and Anthony Davis could play right now, but the Lakers don't want them to play. They want them to get an extended rest. They want them to have the minimum amount of time before the regular season ends just to be able to get in tune for the playoffs. And wherever we end up in the standings, that's where we'll end up in the standings. But they're not going to risk getting going for the third seed or the fourth seed or anything for the health of those two guys because they see all of these players that are getting injured. 
You have a short time off in between seasons. You have a compressed season where you don't even have play. You have lineups that you're playing against guys that aren't used to playing with each other. Your opponents aren't used to being playing with each other. Those are the types of games when big injuries happen. Um, stupid injuries that basically just like what happened, you know, just what happened to Denver that, that could derail your whole season. And I think that the Lakers have looked at that situation and they're going to say, hey, as long as we can win one out of two, like Sean says, <laughs> man, we're going to keep these guys on the bench. Um, now the next five games, the Celtics back-to-backs against the Jazz and then uh, back-to-backs. Uh, who do we play after the Jazz? Is it uh, the Mavericks? The Mavericks. So, the Mavericks. So, you know, those those are five. Those five games are going to determine where we end up in the playoffs. If we can, if we can win three of those five, One or, two. or even two of those five, I think we'll be in good shape. Yeah. If we lose four or five of them, and that's totally possible, then then we'll struggle. You know. Um, hopefully, we can continue this win one, lose one type of scenario, and at least come out two out of the five games. I'd be, I'd be okay with two out of five. I really am shooting for three out of five. Um, but this is the toughest stretch we'll have. We'll have three easy games after that. And then we hit the Celtics. Uh, then we hit the Celtics again. We hit the Clippers again. Uh, the schedule all of a sudden gets pretty radical. Um, like Sean says, everybody's got to play everybody. Um, but the Clippers have got a pretty easy schedule. They only have a few tough games and one of them, one of them is a Laker game. Um, and it's doubtful, you know, we'll have to see. Maybe AD will be back by then, but I've completely switched around from the feeling that I had that AD could even be back when we played the Celtics. I think now the whole approach is going to be, we're not going to risk that at all. No, no, we're not going to risk it. We're going to make sure every chance. I mean, if you let them out this long, you got might as well just keep them out until yeah. they're they're until they're fully one hundred percent and back ready to go. Or at least the best. You yeah, or at least to the to the point where they're going to go ahead and being able to go ahead and function and being at a at a function at a high level per yeah. se. So we're we're gonna go ahead and K, okay, but you're right, there was a major injury today, and we'll go ahead into that. Once again, it is the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. I do want to give a bit, big special shout out to everybody who's given us a thumbs up on Facebook. That is Sage, V, Kesterson, and Jerwin. Thank you so much for your big thumbs up. We truly appreciate it. Once again, the Lakers won 101 to 93. Great defensive performance once again. But the West Western Conference is shaping up now. There was a tragic injury last night in the final minute of a game between the Golden State Warriors and the Denver Nuggets, which could reshape the Western Conference as the once very hot Denver Nuggets after the trade that they got Aaron Gordon and they really looked like more of a complete team. Their starting lineup was, you know, statistically was doing extremely well and things looked like there were things were going to be rounding into shape. They kind of went sour earlier this weekend again with a 31 to eight where they got outscored 31 to eight by the Boston Celtics and kind of went awry there, but Everything was still looking good for them until the last minute of the game. They were down by about five or seven. Really didn't have a chance to win the game, but they were still trying. And unfortunately, Murray just popped that ACL, and Jamal Murray is going to be out for the entire season. And who knows, that's going to affect them well into next season You know, uh, also. So this is going to be something that's going to shake up Denver for some time to come. But Sean, you uh, you know you saw it. Uh, I know he was going on the way up. Right now, Laker Tom, you mentioned about the injuries, and everybody's talking about it ever since uh, Murray got hurt. I mean, I'm hearing it on all the radio shows and all the podcasts are out there. Statistically, heading into April, we are seeing no more injuries than we would at this point of season in a regular season. I want to stress that, even though they are playing a more condensed schedule, and it would seem like that that's the case. Their, their injury rate is not at a higher rate yet. Now, that could change in the next 20 to 25 games, but we'll wait and see. Sean, I want to hear I want to hear your thoughts. I, I want to hear your thoughts. I don't know what that noise is. Is that you, Sean? Oh, that's you, Tom. Uh, Tom, somebody's, uh, somebody's at your house. Somebody's par- party at Laker Tom's house. Just want to tell everybody out there. Uh, Sean, uh, yeah. I do want to... Sean, I, I want to go ahead and say this is something that's going to be a major injury, something that's going to be affecting the Western Conference. 
it might be a benefit to the Lakers. In fact, it probably will be. And I know a lot of teams, as it gets close to those final games of the season, might be looking to position themselves for a first-round matchup against the Nuggets. Uh, absolutely, Gerald. Um, I put Jamal in a, a handful of truly offensively versatile players in the NBA. I mean, he can do it all. He can attack north to south. He can attack east to west. He's got a three ball that is uh, monstrous when he's on. Uh, We saw him and uh, Spada duel 50 points back and forth one another in the bubble. That was an awesome game. It was. And, uh, like, it makes me sick for Jamal because he's a hometown kid. And he really earned his money. And if, like, Tom always points to a silver lining, if there's one silver lining to this, it's that Jamal signed his contract. He earned his money. He's going to get his money. I just hope he comes back stronger from this. But it, like you said, Gerald, it's a tragic. It's it's a tragic injury. Look, well, I'm a Laker fan, but I want to see the Lakers beat the best because then I know truly that we are the best. And when you can't beat the the best teams when they're at their best, it, it, it's bittersweet. And that's what this whole situation is for Denver. Because like you said, they acquired Aaron Gordon. Uh, the pieces fit really well together. They're complementary, as you were saying, Gerald. And you thought they would be shooting up the standings, maybe possibly in for a second or third seed. And it's just like a balloon pops in an empty arena and you just hear it and it's awful. It was off. And you're right. The competitive juices were flowing through him and he just hit that knee just made a wrong turn. And it's I know he had thing. some right knee soreness in the past few games. He was dealing with that and maybe he was overcompensating for some reason, but as he was going up, you could tell he knew in the air that something was going on and, uh, yeah, it was just very painful to watch because he was in such dear pain. And unfortunately, like I said, this is going to affect Denver. They're going to have to figure out what to do in the off season as far as finding a replacement for him because he's going to be out for so long. But Laker Tom, again, that kisses us back to what we're talking about. You're on mute right now. I think you're off mute. But I just wanted to go ahead. I hope the party's done by now. But <laughs> when it comes to – I can hear you now. Good. When it comes to what the, where the Lakers are in the standings, they're actually one game in the loss column behind, technically a half game behind Denver right now. With a win in Boston, that could get them going. And like you said, if they play 50-50 ball throughout, that could be enough to get them that four seed and that first round at home. Yeah, I don't really think there's much difference in the four and five seed other than home court advantage. Um, the, the tough one is to catch the Clippers because they've got an easier schedule. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's, it's a battle for first seed between, between Phoenix and, uh, Utah, and we'll see what happens there. Um, I tend to think that Utah maybe, uh, is going to struggle, you know, I mean, Utah has such continuity from last year, and that's one of the big advantages in this particular season that they have their whole team back, you know, and, uh, and, and they played that way, you know, they, they played very consistent basketball. Um, the question is, are they like Milwaukee? You know, are they a team that's that's built for the regular season and is not going to be able to compete uh, at the high level when they get to the playoffs? So um, we'll see what happens. The next five days, or the next five games are going to be critical for the Lakers, and uh, let's hope that they they come home and they can they can hit a lot of shots, basically, because that's what it's going to come down to. We don't have guys who can get to the basket and create a lot of baskets and and do a lot in that sense, other than Schroeder. Um, but we better hit the threes. If we don't hit our threes in the next five games, we're going to be in trouble because the Jazz and the Clippers are two of the teams that are the best three-point shooting teams. And with Boston, Boston's won seven out of the last ten, so they're playing a lot better than they were even just two, three weeks ago. So they need to go ahead and make sure that if we can, two and three, like you said, is acceptable under the circumstances, but I'd love to see him go ahead and be three and two in the next five games. That would be much more preferred, but guys, it's been a great chance to talk to you both and so glad to do so. Once again, 
It's the Lakers fast break. The Lakers won 101 to 93, ending their road trip at a four and three record. I think under these circumstances, we'll take it any way we can get it like that. But before we head on out, Sean, you wanted to cover something in regards to recent comments that were made by Luka Doncic and also Mark Cuban of the Mavs who are directly affected. And I would wonder what their comments would be, let's say, if they were in third or 12th place, I think, at this point in time, instead of <laughs> in seventh place in the Western Conference. First of all, let's go with what Mark Cuban said, and that it was an extraordinary mistake of him voting and accepting or being part of the ownership crew that voted for the play-in tournament scenario. And then the comments made by Luka Doncic said, I don't even know what the play-in is, so maybe someone will have to alert him. Basically, it's extra games for you at the end of the season. Just keep winning. That's all you have to do is just keep winning. That's the, that's the motto. It's an extra couple games. Uh, uh, could be for some team like in the seventh or eighth seed. Could be an extra three to four games for someone that's you know in the ninth or tenth spot. Idea is to keep more teams invested. The idea is to obviously generate generate more revenue. They'll do that with both. I like it now. I wasn't sure about it then. I still kind of think it's weird how the seventh, eighth, they play each other and kind of, you know, I don't know about that. But again, the rest of the scenario, I thought it should have been like seven versus 10, eight versus nine. And we go from there. That's a little bit easier, more cut and dry. But again, their NBA does it the way they want to do it. But yes, Sean, your thoughts on this whole scenario, this whole controversy made up today. And it's convenient. Like I said before, that is being said by the individuals directly affected by this play in tournament if it were to end today. Uh, first of all, Gerald, I love your idea. And actually, I think that could gain steam than the head offices of the NBA. I think it would be better. Seven versus ten, eight versus nine. That would that would yeah. work out well. Yeah. It, it'd be like champions play in European soccer. It, that's well, it's what, less that's confusing. What the NBA is using. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, first of all, I love the play in term tournament as well. I think it's an incentive for teams to both not tank and to understand that if they do make it, if they do make a deal during the season or the trade deadline, that could bear fruit at the end of the year and somebody who maybe was a 12 or 13 seed, they make a great trade and all of a sudden they backslide into that seven or eighth spot. It creates excitement. Um, Mark Cuban didn't know there would be a global pandemic. Gerald, you didn't. I didn't. Tom didn't. He has buyer's remorse at this point and wants to play Captain Hindsight. The playing tournament is a good thing. It creates more juice, more energy for the NBA. It gets people in other fan bases talking about substantial, tangible basketball discussions. It's a positive thing. Mark Cuban is afraid that they're going to have to play Steph Curry and Steph may put a 50-piece on them, and then there they go, home again, on the range for Mark Cuban. Well, you know what? It is something that they need to be concerned with because you see the way Steph Curry can take over a game, could possibly take over a short series like that because you saw the, even in that Denver game last night, scores 50-plus, becomes the all-time leader for Golden State Warriors. And, yeah, it's, it's just something that uh, – for me, I think it should be cut and dry. Seven to ten, eight to nine. You, you're shaking your head, Laker yeah. Tom. Yes, it should because you're talking about not to you, basketball officials. Not not to you, Laker Tom. This is this should not be for you. This should be something simple for the general fan out there. So it is that simple. Can, oh, no, it's not. Seven no, to listen, eight. Listen, wait, wait. Here's okay. what the rule is. Yeah, I know what the rule is. Seven are. and eight. Seven and eight play. Yeah. Seven gets that. home court advantage. I know the that. winner. The winner gets the seventh seed. Yeah. Okay. Nine and ten play. Yeah. Nine gets home court advantage. Mm -hmm. The winner of that plays the loser of seven and eight for the eighth yep. seed. Mm -hmm. There's no series. It's all single games. It's all no, winner go home type games. It is a series if you if for that ten seed if they keep winning. 
They have to. Well, they have to win two. If the right. series means you play the same team, they would be playing two different teams. They have to win two games. They have yeah, to beat they, the nine, and, and then they have to beat whoever won the seven and eight. So it gives, it, takes, it, it, it gives some basis to seven, eight, nine, and ten. If you win seven, you got a better chance than the eight because you get home court. If you win seven or eight, you have a better chance than nine or ten because you only have to play one game in order to win. But if you have to, right, explain, I, I would. Well, hold on, right, hold on, argue, well, both, would, hold on, Sean, hold on, Sean. If you have to explain it to someone in such great detail like you did, that's not a basketball aficionado <laughs> like I am. Then they're not going to scratch their heads and they're going to go home. Especially also as well, if you play an entire <laughs> season, yeah, you, you got to shake hey, your head. It is, it is like MLB. I will admit the one thing that I agree with. With with okay, Luka, now, uh, you play seventy two start... games. It's like the major leagues where you play one hundred sixty two games and you're in a wild card game. Yeah, and boom, it's... you're gone. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. The local series. but but you're right. But here's here's this. Here, there's another advantage I think that's really great for the teams that are in the nine and ten range, which is that they get two more teams get a chance to have their players play in games that count. Not only in those play in tournament, but in the games leading up to it. It makes the that makes the season so much competitive at the end of the year. And I think that that's something that's really important in the interest. And I'm you not know, disagreeing. And I'm not disagreeing with you. you know, I, I think it's well thought out. It's well thought out. I thought, listen, last year I was screaming the opposite. And, I, and that's basically because of seeing the Yankees get knocked out after playing 162 games and run into a hot pitcher or two and you're out of the series. Well, you're going to run into a hot right. shooter if you're nine or ten, or seven and eight, and you may miss the playoffs that you would have gotten otherwise. But it really focuses on the sixth seed now, doesn't it? Everybody but, wants to be oh. in the top six. Nobody wants to. The, the hard thing is the hard thing is for the one and two teams, they don't know who they're going to play until after the play-in tournament. So it's a disadvantage in the sense that you know you you work all year to get home court advantage, first or second seed. Oh, who do we play so we can get ready? Well, you don't even know. You don't even know until the doggone tournament's over who you're going to play. So again, if you have to explain it in such great detail to someone that's on this on the it's, street, it's fair. It's a fairer situation than giving than than playing seven versus ten and nine versus eight. That doesn't Why? make any sense because then you have to win two games. Okay. How are you going to do and that? Then then? I'll I'll also add, uh, you, you haven't thought scenario. it out. How are you going to how are you going to split it if you if six if seven plays ten and eight plays nine, then who, who gets the seventh and eighth seeds? Those two teams. Well, no, the seventh and the ten move on. It's just like it. it okay, I'll tell you right now. It's so easy how they do it in the turn NCAA tournament. This is just like that. Seven to ten, eight to nine. They move on. As simple as that. It's very simple. It's they're they're putting a they're giving an advantage to the seventh, eighth, ninth. They're giving some more advantage doing. than Ross. I seeding. know what they're doing, but again, it's about marketing to the general public. Don't mar you're not marketing to me. You're not have to explain it to me. Listen, every one of the, every fan in the seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth team understands it. Last year, every fan who's got a team from seventh to ten will understand it this year. It's called the general NBA audience, my friend. That's something that uh, the, the NBA doesn't want to just market to you. They want to grab that <laughs> entire audience and put, making a streamlined system. They're not going to lose a single. They're not going to lose a single viewer because of your objection. Well, they're not going to lose it because of your, you know, two-minute try detailed explanation of it. That will it's still pretty get simple. Them. No, it's not a detail. What's the detail? Seven and eight play for seventh place. The loser yeah. of that plays the winner uh, of ninth and tenth. Again, again, I see things Ten in the bigger words. picture. So it's Ten a words picture. explains it all. Uh, yeah, well, I, you know I, what? Again, I, I, it, it is what it is. But my magic man. The I magic go statement. With, it is what it is. Yeah. I just just before we just before we finish this this off, Joe. Uh, <laughs> just one more caveat. Cuban also has a team that is injury prone, and he has a big man that apparently he's showcasing to the rest of the league. So obviously in the back of his mind, he's prepared for the idea that if something happens to Kristaps Porzingis, that he's going to blame this whole situation, the play in tournament, the pandemic, he's, he's going to blame it all and make excuses. Once again, 
Mark Cuban is a really smart businessman. He achieved a, a success like less than 1.1% of the population will achieve. But since he is now an NBA owner, he has made excuses for the Mavs time and time again. And this is no different. This is no different. I see what kind of game he's playing here. But at best, in, in your in your comments on the blog, basically when you said it's the two whiners, the whiners from the whiners from Dallas, and that's really what it is. Like I said, if they I mean, were in third, Luca, they, there's, there's no bigger whiner as far as a player goes in the NBA than Luka oh. Doncic. <laughs> and there's no bigger owner who's a whiner than Mark Every Cuban. Play. Well, if they're again, it would be a, so much different if they were in third or they were in twelfth. That's just that yeah, simple. So much so, different. Because, but they're, so much different. But they, but they're, because they're right in the middle of it, you know. Obviously, they see things from a different perspective, and uh, you know, everybody else is, seems to be okay with it. Now they'd they'd be whining regardless of where they were about something. It's just a change of subject. Okay, <laughs> fair enough, indeed. But once again, it's the Lakers fast break. Lakers win 101 to 93. They're currently a half game out of fourth place right now, hoping that you know now that there's an unfortunate injury involved in regards to Denver, we'll see what happens there. But I'm hoping that the Lakers can finish out the week strong. But Thursday it is Boston. The rivalry renewed. Although again, as I said the other day, it's just not the same because we actually kind of like Tatum and and Brown. They're kind of really good players, so they're kind of cool to watch. But unfortunately, it is in the Celtic green. But yes, it is the Lakers. They will be playing on Thursday. Go ahead, Sean. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit up Laker Tom on what he's doing at Lakerholics.com in a sec. But go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm working on that rivalry myself, Gerald. I'm so excited for this game. I've always told people the Lakers could go 2-80 and 80 in this season. And if the two wins were against the Boston Celtics, it was a, it was a positive season. Let's let's go on to the next one. Uh, however, I'd like to point out that at the beginning of the season, when Gerald Glassford had Jason Tatum in his MVP poll, and Gerald Jason has kind of played up and down this year, and I'm wondering what do you attribute it to? Do you think oh, it's COVID? Just got, he because had COVID. COVID, yeah. Yeah, he and did. He's, and he's admitted he's had long COVID. He's had, uh, you know, extenuating uh -huh. circumstances, catching his bread off and on. He started out like a house of fire. He started out like a, like an MVP candidate. He's now playing like an MVP candidate. It's just that buffer in the middle, the, that four, uh, three-month period of time where, you know, he caught COVID and he tried to play through it and tried to play after, you know, with and had the effects of it. It's going to slow anyone down. Just ask anyone who has contracted COVID during the NBA season, and you can see and relate their performance from it, and you see how it affects them. And it's going to affect any human being, as it does. I mean, not only if it, if it doesn't hurt you, it doesn't kill you, for a lot of people, it stays with you for a long time. That's why scientists are now treating you know, patients out there with long COVID who didn't even go to the hospital with coronavirus. That's the thing that's that also this virus is doing to us. So... Yeah, I, I would attribute it to that, a lot to that, because, you know, the talent's there. You know, the capability was there after that playoff performance in the bubble. He was tremendous, and you saw a great future for him. Now, Jalen Brown, I think nobody was expecting his leap into, uh, you know, that stratosphere that he is in currently, and he is a nice 1A on the Boston Celtics, but they need more consistency after that. Kemba Walker, you don't know where he's at, his knee, what's going on with his situation from time to time. Uh, you know, obviously they've never gotten their big man situation really solidified at all. Uh, you know, their depth on their bench has been suspect at best. I mean, they've got a lot of issues on that team, which is not understandable because of the fact that Danny Ainge has had a treasure chest in these past few Thank years. Thank God he's the Celtics. General manager, man. Yeah, it's just some <laughs> poor choices there. He's had some really poor draft choices, uh, or and trades. He's just made some really poor trades yeah, and draft trigger. choices. Yeah, so it, it's just you know, hey, the Lakers should have gotten Tatum. You know, if the Lakers get Tatum instead of Ball, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I know you love Ball, but if the Lakers got Tatum, well, I would have had Tatum without a doubt better. Yeah, than go, looking ball. back on that, so uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I mean, they've been playing very well as of late. 
but I'm hoping that the Lakers will slow them down once they get to you know the Staples Center and get back home. We'll see on Thursday. But Sean, before I hit up Laker Tom, any last thoughts on the way out on what you're doing at Lakerholics.com? Yeah, Gerald, just uh, just a quick run through about the the road trip. Four and three. I mean, just take away the positives at this point. Um, I'm going to add into the article as well, you know, what I mentioned here. At this point in time, you know, with 20, 25 games left, if you win one, lose one, that's okay. You're not, you're, you're not gaining any ground, but you're not losing any ground. You're just steady, steady. The Houston Rockets, who finished the 95-96 season, as the sixth seed, basically finished their season 18 and 18. They were the sixth seed going into the NBA playoffs. They ran through the Western Conference, defeated the Spurs in the conference finals, and then swept the Magic in the finals. So if a team like that could do that with bringing in a guy like Clyde Drexler and trying to initiate a Hall of Famer in your offense, if the Lakers can survive these injuries playing 500 ball, it's a blessing in disguise, friends and friends. It's a blessing in disguise. Well, I know what Laker Tom is going to say. He's going to cut comments on us right below. Gerald doesn't know what he's talking about. Blah, 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 the, the podcast tonight. Well, you know what? Seven to ten, double elimination right there for you. Eight to nine, double elimination <laughs> where it's very simple, cut and dry, easiest way to do it. It makes it better for the general fan out there. It ain't going to happen. Well, I didn't say it was going to happen. I know nothing's going to happen because we're not in the NBA offices right now. So that's really no skin off my back. Oh, my gosh. I'm so worried. Oh, it's not going to happen. No, I don't care. You spent about 20 minutes on it already, Gerald. Yes, I know. Well, it's, again, well, I will say this. At least we're not in. I'd like to win the lottery, too, you know. Yeah, that would be awesome. I would like to win it as well. California lottery. I'll go ahead to state line and get a ticket. But before we head on out, my friend, it is Lakerholics.com. And I really want people to go ahead and just share their thoughts and not just Jamie, not just L Rob, not just Sean. Let's go ahead and get Laker Tom some thoughts on the play ins game. Let's, let's see if you're more like Mark Cuban. Let's see if you're more like Laker Tom. Let's see if you're more like me or, or provide another scenario for us. Go ahead and share it today at Lakerholics.com. We want the community to go ahead and share their thoughts on it. I don't think the Lakers will be affected by it, but even if they are, that's what happens. You know, if they fall to seventh, that's the deal. But Laker Tom, I'm hoping everybody will go ahead and communicate their thoughts on this. But also, what are you up to at Lakerholics.com? Well, I'm a little bit concerned about the center position still. You know, we've gone for two years now with Rena Centers, and uh, our latest Rena Center seems to have run into problems. Uh, whether it's his own performance, his weaknesses, um, the lack of having superstars to set him up, because um, he could be a lot different player when we get LeBron and AD. Um, but I'm starting to think that maybe we need to make some changes, because I've also seen Harrell struggle in the last couple of games. Yep. And teams are finding out now that that we have – they found out how basically to keep us from scoring in the center position. Um, and the weaknesses that Harrell and Drummond have are weaknesses that are going to be exploited in the playoffs. Uh, the, both of them have situations where they could be unplayable. And uh, Gasol started to play pretty well, I thought, in the last few times that he's been out on the floor. And the one thing that he does is he cleans out and he pulls out the other center to the exterior. And... I'm starting to think that maybe we need to really start be looking at situations. Um, we've never ever, for example, tried to play Harold along with Gasol at the four so that we get even more rebounding and strength defensively. So uh, one of the things that I want to look at and discuss in, in is, uh, is looking at the situation of what are the Lakers going to do with the center position over the next five games? You know, they got Rudy Gobert coming up Um the Celtics are a different story, um, but it's, you know, you, you, you've got some situations coming up where other teams are going to have seen what has happened to the Lakers in the center position in the last two games. And there are definitely teams that have the skill level to take advantage of that situation. Um, 
again, it comes back to how are the Lakers going to play? You know, um, I think you're right. I, I had high hopes and aspirations that the Nets game would, it's going to be a turnaround situation and we were going to all of a sudden click and, and Drummond and uh, Macklemore were going to suddenly uh, be the gems that we hoped they could be in the right situation. And I still think that there is a possibility that in the playoffs, they both could be very valuable, but there's also the possibility that they may not. There is a possibility that teams will figure out that those are weaknesses. We saw, we saw the, uh, tonight, we saw a lot of, a lot of attacking of Ben Lacklemore on defense, you know, at least three or four times in a row. Uh, they, they kept moving and switching on him. The Lakers made a good adjustment because they started switching everything then. So that you know that it was really hard. They'd, they'd immediately get Macklemore off of anybody that had the ball. Um, but those are, you know these are the things that become a lot more important when you get into a series in the playoffs than they are in the single games like we're playing now. Um, and they also though you get a taste of it when we have these two game back to back series that we've got coming up. And so you know the Mavs and the Mavs and the uh, and the Jazz are both going to be looking for ways to attack the Lakers. And they're going to be looking at what have teams done most recently to attack them simply because the teams have changed. You know, everybody's changing now. Um, this is still one of those seasons where you don't know. I mean, the South, the, the Clippers, for example, even though they've won five in a row and, and uh, I think they were ahead tonight, uh, they're still, they still haven't had, the regular team on the floor. They, they haven't developed continuity. It's, it's, you know, Kawhi was out tonight. It was, and it's, they never seem to have the same five guys on the team that are in there. And it's like all of these other teams. And that's, that's one of the reasons why we're seeing so many erratic results coming in because the teams haven't gotten themselves down. And it's why the jazz, for example, have done so well during the entire season, the, the benefit of continuity and, and consistency of playing with the same guys night in and night out and knowing where everybody is going. We see it in every game passes between two guys who haven't played well, haven't played together much and the pass goes awry, you know? So it's still, it's still a heckle and Jekyll and Hyde type of situation. Uh, this is still a second COVID influenced season and uh, who knows what's going to happen over the next, you know, rest of the season and where, Teams are going to end up. There's a lot of competition. The play-in tournament has complicated the situation even more. Um, and it's it's hard to predict exactly right now. When you look at the standings in the West or the East, it's very hard to predict who's going to be at what position when the season ends. Well, we'll see what happens. It's going to be very hard indeed. It is definitely going to be very hard indeed. But once again, it is the Lakers fast break. The Lakers do pull out the victory. 101 to 93 wasn't the most artistic game in the world, but we'll take it. It's a win nonetheless. It could be the ugliest thing in the world, but as long as it win for the Lakers, that's quite all right with us. But I'll tell you what, we will be back Thursday night after the Boston game. I do want to give an alert to everybody that listens to us on the Lakers fast break channel. Tomorrow, I will be dropping a fantastic episode with Stone Hansen from Upside Swings Podcast. We will be talking about things that he's looking for that the Lakers hopefully will do in the offseason. Plus, of course, he's a specialist on the NBA draft, so we'll be talking about that as well. So look forward to that wherever you get your podcasts. And, of course, for our live audience, we'll be here on Thursday night, hopefully with a victory over the green. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We're hoping. But again, the Lakers do win 101 to 93. And we'll see you Thursday night right here at the Lakers Fast Break Podcast.